Hi there, so in this video we're going to go through the last two Van der Waals forces, the permanent dipoles, permanent dipole interactions and the hydrogen bonding. If you've not seen my video on London dispersion forces, then you can check that out on my higher chemistry playlist as well. So if we get started on this, permanent dipole to permanent dipole interactions and hydrogen bonding are actually very similar, they're essentially the same thing. It's just that in one instance, there's a very strong permanent dipole attracted to another very strong permanent dipole. So the attraction's very strong. So that's why hydrogen gets its own name because it's just a very, very strong form of a permanent dipole to permanent dipole interaction. If we get into this, the permanent dipole to permanent dipole interaction. So that's just an attraction that occurs between two oppositely charged sides of two permanent dipoles in neighboring molecules. So, here we've got a molecule that's got a permanent dipole because chlorine's more electronegative than hydrogen. If you look at page 12 in the data booklet, you'll see that. And so what happens then when you've got two hydrogen chloride molecules next to each other, the partial negative charge on this side attracts the partial positive charge on this side of the other molecule. So your permanent dipole to permanent dipole interaction would occur there. In this molecule here, we've got a um, carbonyl functional group, which is renowned for creating a, a permanent dipole in a molecule. So the oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon, which means that ends up as delta minus, the carbon is delta plus. So then that means that if you have another molecule of propanol, which is what this is, those oppositely charged ends of those two neighbouring permanent dipoles will attract each other. So you would get the permanent dipole attraction happening there. Hydrogen bonding happens in exactly the same way, it's just that in this instance, hydrogen is bonded to nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine within the molecule. So you'll see in these molecules here, there's oxygen, right, hydrogen bonded to oxygen, hydrogen bonded to oxygen, hydrogen bonded to fluorine. You could also have hydrogen bonded to nitrogen. So anytime you see hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine, then that means that the molecule will take part in hydrogen bonding. So you want to look out for hydroxyl groups, OH groups, um, HF molecules, and also amine groups, NH groups. Some people quite often see a carbonyl group on an aldehyde and think, oh, that must have hydrogen bonding because they see a hydrogen near an oxygen, but that hydrogen is not bonded to the oxygen. So that's not hydrogen bonding. That's just a permanent dipole to permanent dipole interaction. So for the hydrogen bonding, that would occur again between a delta minus in one molecule and a delta plus in another. When you're drawing these, you need to make sure that they're close together. So for example, um, don't do like that because that's not going to happen realistically. They're not close enough together. So make sure if you are drawing the molecules as well, that you draw them at an arrangement of it like this so that you can get a delta minus next to a delta plus in the other molecule. For this molecule here, the methanol, again, the delta minus, is going to be attracted to delta plus. So if we, this one's maybe a little bit of a stretch, but it's not terrible, but we could draw a better one. And that we could do this delta plus to that delta minus, and that's a bit of a shorter distance. Here, delta minus in this molecule, attracting a delta plus in this molecule, so that would be your hydrogen bond interaction there. My advice would be to always draw on the partial charges on the functional groups, just because it allows you to see a bit more clearly what's going to be attracted to what, and just make sure they are in close proximity to each other. So, in summary, if you have a permanent dipole in a molecule, that can then be attracted to another permanent dipole in a neighbouring molecule and it's the oppositely charged ends in the separate molecules that attract each other. If you have a molecule where hydrogen is bonded to nitrogen and oxygen or fluorine, then that molecule can form hydrogen bonding, which is the strongest form of all the Van der Waals forces. And again, the delta minus in one molecule will attract the delta plus in the other molecule. If you forget in the middle of your exam, what elements are required for hydrogen bonding to occur, then you can just bond a friend. F O N. If you like, if you want to go in there, you're probably a little too young for that now. Um, but I'm sure there'll be repeats of it on like Dave or some one of those channels. Oh, yeah.
got limited spreading forces, permanent dipoles, permanent dipole interactions, and hydrogen bonding in order of increasing strength. The LDFs are attractions between temporary dipoles that are caused by an uneven distribution of electrons. And what you need to remember is that if there's more electrons in a molecule, then the LDFs will be stronger when compared to another smaller molecule that's got less electrons. Permanent dipole to permanent dipole interactions is where you have an attraction between neighbouring permanent dipoles that are caused by a difference in the electronegativity of the bonded atoms. So if you've got a carbon bonded to an oxygen um, or a hydrogen bonded to a chlorine, that creates a permanent dipole because of their difference in electronegativity. Then that permanent dipole can attract another permanent dipole in a neighbouring molecule. And then for hydrogen bonding, that's an attraction between neighbouring permanent dipoles that are caused by hydrogen being bonded to nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine. So remember, if you forget, just fawn a friend. How many times can I make that bad joke? And as a rule of thumb, if a molecule has more OH groups or NH groups compared to another molecule, then that means the hydrogen bonding between its molecules will be stronger. So I hope that demystifies the van der Waals forces a little bit for you. They do take quite a while to get your head around, but eventually they will click, I promise. And you can check out my other videos to find out how the types of van der Waals forces then go on to affect properties of a substance like its melting and boiling point, its volatility, its viscosity, and then also how the bonding and structure affects the solubility.